um, you have a children. What do you think you have to do to teach them their manners? It's mm -hmm. important to your faith <coughs> and, and it's important to others, people around them. Mm -hmm. And what would you do? What would you be your steps? Do you have any plans? Well, I have a three-year-old boy and a three-month-old daughter. So perhaps your viewers could phone in and give me some tips rather than <laughs> okay. that. Because I daily feel like I <laughs> don't know what I'm doing. Would you like to say doing. hello to them? Yeah. Please keep <laughs> <their> <laughs> <and> <laughs> them. Okay. Hopefully they're in bed by now. Okay. Um, but uh, a lot of what's been sort of, sort of said and discussed already, I think the importance of just being present, both in your family and also in the community. I spent some time working with gangs in California, in the USA, and so many of the young men there who had made poor decisions, who weren't caring for themselves, let alone for their neighbours, mm. is because it hadn't been modelled to them. They hadn't had a father figure, they hadn't had any mm. figure in their lives who'd, st who'd stuck around for more than a few months at a time. They were lacking that kind of role model. And I don't see that level of, um, I suppose, disengagement in, in our community. There's, you know, there's elements of that. You know, we see gangs of young men hanging around on street corners, sometimes selling drugs, those sorts of things. Um, but, it, but I think it's important of recognizing that need, that it's, you know, as a father, I see the importance of, of being a male role model to my young son. That is, I find it quite scary now that, you know, he's just three years old, but, but seeing how he watches, how I interact with my wife, how I interact with my neighbours, he sort of soaks all this up. Sometimes he'll come out with things that I'm like, oh, did you hear me say that? You know, it's, it's being aware that from a very early age that, that those lives are being shaped by what I'm doing, by what we're doing mm. in our community. Mm. And so taking that seriously and, 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 and helping with that, being a positive Does model. he go to school? Yeah, not yet. He's just started at nursery school. So what so would you say on the way? What would you talk to him? Would, you, would it be like you will see a lot of different, different faces from different countries? So it's a nice way to interact with them. So it can be different, but he's got this, he's got that. Yeah, you know, and him I, him I think tips. that's one of the, the great benefits of, of growing up in, in East London because it's, it's not something I have to install. Some of my mm. friends who live out, I don't know, in, in Cumbria or somewhere else where it's a mostly white community, then some of my friends are sort of having to have more of those conversations about, I don't know, different faiths, different beliefs, different uh, sort of mm. communities. And so I love that, that my son, when he's walking just just down past, you know, on our, on our block, he's, he's passing multiple, you know, uh, different <coughs> cultures, different backgrounds. And, and also he experiences the different sort of levels of life as well. You know, I love it. I sort of encourage him that when we walk past someone who is homeless too, mm. we're going to have a conversation. We'll ask their name. He'll if, ask if they have food. And so it's not hiding that, that there are uh, difficult things in society or that there are bad things in the world, but, but having those opportunities to say, this person is homeless, this person is a drug addict, and that, that's not right, and it's our role to care for those people. Of and course, so it's, it's that day-to-day -day <coughs> modelling. I, I don't think that we can leave it just to our teachers or our, you know, our vicars mm. or who, mm. you know, whoever, our faith leaders, whoever it is, to, mm. to do that. It, it needs to come as a daily thing that, that we are being watched daily by our young people. And I think there are challenges within our community of intergenerational differences where perhaps people, migrants that have come to this country and, and speak one language, and then a couple of generations later, <coughs> they, yeah. they come to school and just speaking English. And so there's that disengagement, yeah. that there mm. isn't a heart language between those generations. And so that's a bigger challenge, but it, it's, mm. it, it, it doesn't mean that it can't be bridged. Mm. It just means that more effort, and perhaps then there is a greater role within the community, perhaps it, whether it's a church or a mosque, or whatever it is, to, to help those families that are struggling because of some of those differences that we see within our community. You know, it's amazing. It's like you're working with your kid, but you're educating him all the way. Mm. Absolutely. And things, mm. this kind of stuff, you won't learn in the school, actually. No. This mm. is more experience. And mm. I've seen my dad doing that. I've yeah. seen my dad talking to that person. I've seen my dad doing this. Mm. It's always going to be in your back of your mm. mind. And, and, and that builds a respect. Mm. Yeah. 